be the retired admiral that's the summary of this object? You'd have to talk to the Pentagon. I don't know. Again, guys, this just happened within the last now hour and a half, and uh, and they're still assessing uh, where this thing landed and, and the degree to which they can get to it. And on the Poland visit, uh, I know in the statement that you put out, Karine, it says that the president is going to meet uh, with leaders of the eastern flank NATO countries. Are any other European leaders, NATO leaders, expected to join the president on this trip? We're still putting the agenda together. The pr predominant reason to meet with them, the Bucharest 9, as you call it, is, is to really talk to those nations who are literally on the the, the, the eastern flank of, of the NATO alliance, but I can't rule in or rule out that there may be additional attendees or additional meetings that the president might have. Thank you very much. Um, hello, John. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Back to Lula, if we can remember him. Um, is there, is, is there, is there going to be any commitment to the Amazon fund by the United States uh, during this visit? Uh, I think uh, let's let's have the visit. All right, let's bring in uh, retired and, uh, Brigadier General Blaine Holt to talk about uh, the information we've had, and Jonathan Gilliam also joining us, uh, former FBI agent. Uh, let's start with uh, the general. Uh, your thoughts again as this continues to develop. And I and I did think we had one question. Do we mm -hmm. know this object was from China? Um, and and if you surmise that, what do you base it on? Uh, I think it's a reasonable assumption at this point in time. Can't imagine that the North Koreans, which would be the other likely candidate, would jump on the balloon game uh, just because of what just happened. So I would say we're definitely dealing with China. That should probably be the working theory. And, and in these matters, you obviously don't want to get too out in front of your skis, but I think you better get out far enough to understand the dangers that could happen. We have to look at these things in terms of most likely and most dangerous. And the most dangerous things can be incredibly dangerous. Is this an overture towards some other act of aggression? Was there some weapon on board this new shape? Um, what do we do with the Chinese uh, uh, spies that we know are in our country right now? What, what, what other ways could China come at us and compromise us and our interests around the world? And I'm confident that the leadership in the Pentagon are all looking at those as we speak. They, they better be. Jonathan, your reaction to what we're learning now in real time? <clears throat> well, I, I, I'd love to hear the general's take on this because I have a problem with real time uh, intelligence that's coming out from our spokespeople to the media and to the world. And I think with these instances uh, with the balloon, I know that the, the one previous to this object was over the United States for quite some time, but once it was shot down, it was publicized how it was being uh, searched for and the way they were bringing things up. And I just, I, I think what I see now is everything that I've seen before with the Biden administration and these spokespeople is that they try to turn everything they do into a press conference uh, for publicity sake. And I yeah. think, you know, I was concerned myself about the fact that uh, that balloon before was able to get into the United States airspace. With this one, it appears that it, it was still able to get over Alaska. Um, why that is, I don't know. But uh, the fact that they shot it down when they did, now they're using that and they're publicizing that. And I have no idea where national security starts and where the uh, press conferences begin. And that's a problem. I have a real problem with that. General. Yeah, so I, I, I'm with Jonathan, and he raises a great point. What we saw last week in the reporting of this was a mess. Uh, it lacked credibility. There was no consistency of message. No one to date has ever explained why we didn't shoot it down before it entered our uh, airspace and before it entered our landmass. Um, and then everybody seems to take it on rote, and I don't know why, that uh, they were 100 percent confident it was no threat to the United States with no weapons on board. Unless you had it in your hands, how would you know? And and, and so all of this back and forth and then these strange announcements in Congress about uh, domation, uh, d dominion, domain gap awareness, uh, we just lost it. We pay nearly a trillion dollars for our security every year, and the American people have a right to expect a higher standard. And so what we have to find out is the decision tree and the chain. Did the military offer options to the president in a timely manner? Have to know that. And then what was the decision of the National Security Council and this national security team under the president's direct direction? These, these are all things that need to be scrutinized. And now we're seeing where um, they just went ahead and shot it down over Alaska, which is actually counter to what they said was a good idea last week. So to Jonathan's point, 
consistency in message and the standard will raise the credibility with the American people. Right now, we're very, very concerned we're not being told the whole story. General, quickly, before we go back to Jonathan, you mentioned earlier um, that y there would be some, some specific ideas on how this would be recovered, considering it was not just shot down over land, it was shot down over uh, U.S. Territor territorial waters in Alaska, and those waters are now frozen. So once again, what would the process be to recover any debris? Mm -hmm. Right, so right now, as we're speaking, there is an HC-130J, that is a search and recovery aircraft, normally used to go find crews that are downed. Um, but it can, it's got a lot of special equipment on board that can go locate this object. Um, my hope is that this time they didn't fire a missile into it uh, and destroy the, the cargo bay so that we can't really see what happened. My hope is that they just put a few bullets into the balloon, if that's what it was, and let it descend uh, gradually so that what, whatever we find will be intact. But with our tools on that airplane, we will be able to go locate that box and we will be able to recover it. Now, I don't know, Jonathan, what... Uh, um which aircraft, which fighter jet was used to take this down. Uh, F-18s cost, I think, something like $60 million. I'm sure the uh, general can confirm or deny that. Uh, but this is a very low-tech um, device um, being utilized to get us to scramble some very expensive uh, uh, technology to respond. And I'm wondering if that is their goal just to kind of find out what our defenses are. I mean, that very well could be. And, and uh, why would a nation start to escalate these types of movements on the United States? And I, I find this fascinating that I'm getting to be on with a general because as a, a lieutenant in the Navy, I never really got to be in the presence of a general when we were doing these discussions. But, um, <laughs> you know, what? what's really kind of, uh, interesting about this is let's say they're, that they're trying to do research not to gather intel but to press our forces to see how they could put something like an electromagnetic pulse bomb or two pulse bombs over the United States now they've, they've shown twice that uh, they, can, they can actually get a bomb clear across the United States if possible uh, while one is traversing south of the border and then now they've shown that uh, at 40,000 feet, with another uh, object, they're able to penetrate the, air, the, uh, the airspace again and actually get something moving over Alaska. And let me tell you, Bob, two of these pulse bombs specifically placed over the United States could take out every single bit of electricity that we have and send us, fry it completely, and send us back to the Stone Age. So my worry is that not, they're not just gathering intel but they're actually uh, doing research to find out how far in they can get to our electrical grid or other targets of opportunity to use these devices in order to use bombs or other types of technology. Well, well Lieutenant, the general is nodding his head. The, the <laughs> Congress needs to ask the question, you're dealing with these balloons one at a time, and they seem to be getting through. What if they launch 400 balloons, right, right. and we can't pick which one has the device? So, so that's why I'm saying we need to get out in front of this, because the most dangerous side of this coin is pretty dangerous. Yeah. All right, General Blaine Holt, Jonathan Gilliam, thank you both. Please